It's Sunday, May 24th. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel, and this is the third video in an ongoing series on the tragic loss of Flight 8303 from Pakistan International Airlines in Karachi, Pakistan. This video's series is brought to you by the folks that sponsor this channel over on Patreon as all the videos on this particular story have been demonetized by YouTube from this channel. We have some important updates to add to this story today brought to you by Simon Radecki over at Aviation Herald. I recommend sponsoring him as well. And it's not looking good for the flight crew of Flight 8303. All the bodies have been recovered from the crash. Miraculously, there were two survivors from inside the aircraft and nobody on the ground was killed. Only four people on the ground were injured. Now regarding the flight itself, today Pakistan media quote from a CAA, Civil Aviation Authority official speaking on a condition of anonymity that the aircraft made two attempts to land. Well, he made one scrape and go and then attempted to get around the pattern and then crashed on a left base entry to runway 25 left. During the first approach, it appears the landing gear was still retracted when the aircraft neared the runway. The pilot had not indicated any anomaly or emergency. Emergency services thus did not respond and did not foam the runway, as would be done in the case of a gear malfunction. The marks on the runway between 4,500 feet and 7,000 feet down the runway suggest the engines made contact with the runway surface. It is possible that the engines were damaged during that contact with the runway surface, even leading to the possibility of a fire. Runway 25 left at Karachi is over 11,000 feet long. This aircraft apparently touched down midway down the runway on its engine. A spokesman for the airline said the landing gear had not been partially or fully lowered prior to the first touchdown. The crew did not call out the standard operating procedures for an anomaly and no emergency was declared. This is the first approach. Most likely the crew was not mentally prepared for a belly landing and went around when they realized the engines were scraping the runway. Remember in the last bit of video footage of the final crash, the crew did somehow manage to get the gear down. So let's go inside and look at the scrape marks on the runway, look at their location, and go over some Airbus landing gear systems review. So here's the airport diagram for Karachi Airport, runway 25 left, 11,155 feet long. Looking at the Google Maps view, we're going to be focusing on near taxiway Delta located right here on the yellow line and referencing the large building off to the left, both of which is more than halfway down the runway. Here you can see the left scrape mark from the number one or left engine followed by the right scrape mark from the right engine. You can see the large reference building to the left of the screen off in the distance and taxiway Delta is ahead of us. Then the marks disappear as the aircraft appears to bounce or perhaps he was starting his go around at this point and the aircraft settles back down on the runway with some even more pronounced scrape marks coming up here. These scrape marks indicate that the cowling was sparking and a beginning to catch fire. This corroborates to me the evidence of a very high speed touchdown midway down the runway as shown by the lack of evidence of damage to the tail of the aircraft during this event. The scrape marks then disappear. At this point, as we approach taxiway Delta and then reappear one last time as the aircraft settles down back onto the runway for one final time while he initiates his go around.
Here's some still shots of the scrape mark sent in by Blanco Lirio viewers from Pakistan from the History of Pakistan International Airlines Aviation Forum. Remember how this is supposed to work is you're supposed to be completely stabilized at 1,000 feet above the ground prior to landing and that means on speed properly configured and that on speed means you have a V reference landing speed you need to be either on that speed or up to 20 knots above that speed but at no time below that speed on glide slope with the checklists completed all at a thousand feet at the very minimum on a VFR visual approach you need to be have your speed within that 20 knot window by 500 feet above the ground standard operating procedures for landing besides touching down with your gear down is you need to touch down in the first third of the runway and in no case no further than 3,000 feet down the runway if in the event that you can't make those numbers you gotta go around if in the event that you have a landing gear malfunction, you simply need to take the aircraft around, go into a holding pattern, and sort it out. There's any number of ways to get this landing gear down on these aircraft. Another reason investigators are going to need to look at the speed and the stability of the approach is this issue with the landing gear system on the Airbus A320. The Air Data Reference Unit 1 or 3, if it either of those two sense an indicated airspeed of greater than 260 knots, it will not allow you to lower the landing gear on the Airbus to prevent structural damage to the landing gear and or the landing gear doors. So if your indicated airspeed is above 260 knots, the ADR will not allow the safety valve to open and allow hydraulic pressure to pressurize the lowering of the landing gear. But if you put the landing gear handle in the down position and you are above 260 knots airspeed, you will get the constant repeating chime warning signal as was heard on the ATC audio tape when flight 8303 was cleared to land. So a lot of different things for investigators to study as they peel back the layers of this accident by going through the flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder. As we get new information here, we'll keep you posted. Thanks so much for your support. See you here.